Today, I'm going to show you how to adjust white balance in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to adjust white balance in Photoshop. Now, white balance is typically associated with raw images. So if you have a raw image, great. But if you're working with a JPEG, that's totally going to be fine as well. Now, a lot of people adjust their white balance in Lightroom, which is a great raw processing software. But if you don't have Lightroom or you're just like, I'm into Photoshop, you can do the same things in Photoshop, little secret. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and show you how it's done. So here's our sample image today. We have a DNG, which is a raw file. We're gonna go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. Now, don't forget, if you wanna follow along, you can actually download this exact image on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So anytime you open up a raw image into Photoshop, you're gonna jump into Adobe Camera Raw. So you can see this dialog box here that we have. This is Adobe Camera Raw, where you can do things like adjust your color temperature. This is the same thing as white balance, by the way. So white balance and color temperature, you can adjust them here. Now, we're just gonna pass through this dialog real quick, and I wanna show you how you can adjust this white balance at any point in time, it's super cool. So my suggestion, if you're opening a raw image in Photoshop, I suggest clicking right down here on the very bottom, boop, and then make sure you click this open Photoshop as smart object. Make sure that's checked, okay? That's gonna help you get back to Adobe Camera Raw at any point in time, so super important. Make sure that's checked and hit okay, and then just hit open object. So it's like we did nothing right there for our white balance, but you can always get back to that dialog box. Now, because we opened our raw file as a smart object, check this out, super cool. All I have to do is double click right here on the thumbnail, boop, boop, and we're back in Adobe Camera Raw where I can do things like adjust our white balance. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of these. Now, basically I have my camera set to auto all the time, auto white balance, because I'm shooting in raw, which means you can adjust that sort of thing after the fact. So here you can choose a few different white balances. This is auto, daylight, let's go ahead and choose something that's gonna be a big difference, tungsten, fluorescent. Okay, so you'll be able to match your white balance to the lighting conditions. Also, I find personally, sometimes I'm like, it was like a warm day. This is a photo I took in Mexico recently. Let's just bring up our shadow levels a little bit. Boop, so I can see some of the detail there. We're gonna bring down our highlight levels a little bit so I can see some of what's going on in the sky. We just bring our exposure up a little bit in general. Highlights down a little bit. Okay, that's looking great. Now, this is like a warm day in Mexico. So this is the white balance that I got straight out of the camera, but I'm like, I want a little bit more warmth here in my image. So we're just gonna take our color temperature and just drag this from the left to the right, just a little. You don't have to go super far. You know, if you go far, you're gonna wind up with something that doesn't look realistic. So you can just drag that just a little bit and it's gonna add a little bit of warmth to the image. And of course you can bring your color temperature down, which is changing your white balance, by the way and that's gonna make your image look cooler. So if you want your image to kind of have like a cold feeling to it, you can bring your white balance down. If you want it to feel like warm and nice and sunny, you can bring it up a little bit. I think right about there looks great. So let's go ahead and hit okay, and we can see the change. It's gonna happen, poof, immediately. So that's really it, adjusting white balance in Photoshop. So we saw how this is awesome when you're working with a raw image, but does this work with a JPEG? The answer is yes. Let's show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and open up. I went ahead and saved out the original image as a JPEG as well. So I've got the same image that we started with originally. You can see .jpeg, so it's a JPEG there, not fooling you here, uh, without any of the adjustments on. So how do we do this with a JPEG? Because you open up JPEG and it's not gonna take you to the Adobe Camera Raw dialog. There's the Adobe Camera Raw dialog is actually in your filter menu, so you can get to it at any point in time, no matter what type of image you are working on. So let's check it out. We're going to go to filter and down here to camera raw filter. Beautiful. So we have access now to our temperature. You can change things. You have an auto option and you have a custom option where you can just set it here and back to as shot. So while we are able to change our white balance here for a JPEG, we're not going to have as much power as we did with a raw photograph. So let's go ahead and see what we can actually do. 
So we're gonna start off, I kind of wanna do the same workflow here. Let's bring up our shadow levels a little bit. We'll bring down our highlights a little bit. I'm just gonna raise up our exposure just a little. It's looking good. Now let's see what we can do with our white balance. So again, you don't have to pick from here, but you can just choose to move around your temperature and your tint because these control your white balance. So let's go ahead and bring up our color temperature. And yeah, it's looking totally good. Let's bring it down a little bit and that looks great. Now I have found if you wanna like really push it, uh, a raw image tends to give you a lot better results if you're like going super far to the left or the right. But most of the time we're just doing subtle white balance adjustments anyway. So check it out. Let's just bring that a little bit to the right. And I think we're looking really, really good. And this, in my opinion, is much better than using like a curves adjustment layer and like trying to add yellow. I think the temperature slider in the camera raw dialog just calculates color much better. So this is all with a JPEG. What, white balance on a JPEG? Crazy. Let's hit okay and see how they compare. So here we have our, here we go. Here we have our JPEG image on the right and our raw image here on the left. And as you can see, like pretty dang good, right? I'm super impressed with the adjustments we've been able to make with our JPEG as opposed to the raw image. Now, still I'm a traditionalist and I'm like, I always want the most information possible. So I'm gonna continue shooting in raw. But for those of you guys who are shooting in JPEG and want to edit your white balance, this is how you do it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to quickly and efficiently set your white balance in Adobe Photoshop. So you can see this is the before, it's a yellow tint on everything. And then this is going to be the after where we actually correct it back to the proper white balance. So let's get started on this. It's not too hard of an effect to pull off, um, but it just uses some, some fun tools in Photoshop. First thing you wanna do is find an image or the image that you're editing and import that into Photoshop. I'm using an image from Envato Elements. It's a fantastic resource for anything stock footage. Instead of having to pay individually, you pay a subscription, you can download unlimited amounts of video, clips, templates, things like that. Fantastic, check out the link in the description below. So once you go ahead and import your footage, a lot of times it'll import as background with a lock over here. You want to unclick that and make it not a lock anymore so that the layer can be manipulated. Then we're gonna go down to the bottom right and we're going to create a new layer. It says little plus button right here. It'll create a new layer on the top. We're then going to use the edit fill right there. And we're gonna use contents 50% gray, opacity 100. You'll see that it creates this big sort of gray box here. The next step that we wanna do is we wanna change its blending mode. So make sure you have the layer one selected, go up to this normal area and we're gonna go up or actually down to difference and then it creates this sort of funky X-ray look to it. We then wanna apply an effect onto this called threshold. So it's this sort of yin yang symbol in the bottom right to apply different effects and adjustments. You can also use the adjustments layer up here and find it as well, but we're gonna go here, threshold, and you're gonna see it's you know completely black at this point. You'll have the properties menu come up and then from here, we're gonna drag it as far to the left as we can. Instead of trying to use your hand here, Click on this and use the up and down arrows on your keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to a point where there's some very solid lines here. And you can see right here, we have a good patch. So we're then going to go to the left side here, go to your eyedropper tool. You can click the eye button to get there. We're gonna go to that point and now you're gonna hold your shift key and you're gonna see it changes to that sort of almost like a crosshair above it. Find that point where it's perfectly black, click right there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a marker that we can use. We then go back, we un, or we just hide this top layer, this little eye icon right here, hide this middle layer, and now we have the icon. What we've done is we found the perfect gray for this. So what can we do with this information? Now we can go ahead on and select layer zero, go down into the effects again. We're gonna look for curves. In the curves menu, again, it's gonna be in the properties here. There are three of them, black, gray and white. This is how you adjust things based off of the footage you have. We want the middle one gray. We're then going to go to our point and we're just going to click on it. And magically it will have worked. All we did was all of this was just to help us find our middle gray because us as human beings, it's hard for us to just look and say, well, that's a perfect gray, especially when it's being manipulated outside of the white color balance. So with this, we are actually able to find the perfect gray within our shot, use this to touch that perfect gray, and then we can quickly and efficiently make sure our white balance is perfect.